Hello everyone, good evening from me and welcome back uh, to my kitchen table. If you didn't see, uh, my last week's video was a compilation of some sketchbook sessions I did while I was out on a trip to the woods. <clears throat> and also welcome if this is your first ever video. I hope you uh, will enjoy it and stick around. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Today, I've had a little brain worm about this video for some time. I'm trying to take advantage of the, the late evening light here that we're getting now. It's more summery. And I've been a little bit obsessed with this color. This is titanium yellow. And this is the tube that I have from Schmincke that, was, uh, that I showed in an art haul recently. And the pigment is a PY53, which is nickel titanate yellow. And it's a colour that I've been obsessed with ever since I found it from uh, Roman Schmal. Here is my uh, collection of some of my Roman Schmal colours, and it's this one right here. But one thing that I have not explored so much with it yet <coughs> is uh, the mixing potential. So today I thought I might try mixing Nickel Titanate Yellow PY53 with eight other colours that I will choose at random because, as usual, like every other video I make, this is completely unplanned. Um, and see what mixes we get. And I've decided to do it in a slightly different format. So, uh, and like my usual uh, grid format or something, I decided to do, maybe we could do a wheel. Haven't done a color wheel here before, so I guess I'll put the yellow in the middle and the colors are on the outside, and hopefully we will be able to see a few of the color mixes in between. So without further ado, I'm going to squeeze, uh, I'm going to use this titanium yellow from Schmincke Horodam, but I think it's exactly the same shade as the one that I have from Roman Schmoll. It just means that I can use up this tube of paint uh, and let's get into it. So I'll be using my uh, favorite brush, my Da Vinci uh, Spin Synthetics quill brush size number one. And um, first of all, got some water off screen here. I'm recording? Yes. Let's uh, just make a puddle of this beautiful yellow. I wonder if the part of the reason I've been so obsessed with this color uh, recently is because it reminds me of daffodils like the very pale yellow daffodils you get at this time of year. And it's quite an opaque colour, which is interesting to me. I do plan to do a video about mixing opaque watercolours, which has been a bit of a trend recently. Um, Denise, Denise Soden from In Liquid Colour, I believe, did a collaboration with the watercolour brand Da Vinci recently, where she released a set of colours celebrating the um, opacity of watercolour and how we can fall in love with it because I think it's a little bit of an underappreciated um, quality of watercolours and honestly I'm in the camp of people who don't aren't quite there yet in terms of understanding <laughs> but I am I want to learn I do want to learn and so uh, maybe this is my first foray into that anyway so I guess I'll start with mixing maybe an orange. So this is my uh, slightly battered Roman Schmoor collection. And this is uh, Aquarius Orange, this one right here. And I think I might start with, with that one. Because it's one of my favourites. I guess I'm a bit biased. And I hopefully you can see this uh, the mixing process also on my, on my palette here. I found my little ceramic tray back, so... She's back, everybody. <laughs> I uh, couldn't find this ceramic tray for my last mixing video. Turns out it was under the pile of uh, garbage. <laughs> well, not real garbage, but you know what I mean. On my kitchen table. I think everybody develops a pile of garbage on their kitchen table at some point. And I don't plan for this to be a very neat colour wheel, by the way. Watercolours don't enjoy being restrained like that, really, do they? So I guess I'll try and mix uh, mostly this uh, yellow with the orange at first and see where that gets us. 
Okay. Oh, this is so bright already. It's like a sunny apricot. It's interesting how the orange has made the yellow almost a more luminous colour, I guess, because it's also more transparent. I don't really know what I'm going to get with these mixes. Um, I've done a couple of mixes with Nickel Titanate Yellow in the past just because I like it so much, but I never really experimented with a lot of different colours. I'm also intrigued to find out what colours I'm going to choose because I don't know that yet either. So I'll add a little bit more orange to this mix. Try and get somewhere that's like an in-between colour. I think this might be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a more vibrant apricot, I guess. I tried to make these segments of this circle so they would be roughly like not so unevenly sized. Getting a little bit of overlap there, that's fine. I think I'm gonna do this in like alternating segments so I don't uh, have too much bleeding between my different mixes. Just the ones within the same color, which I don't mind. We all have a little bit of a watercolor bead. And I thought I'd just, uh, we could just have a chat, you know, have a catch up. My last video was all uh, all voiceover, no um, no random chatting, and I missed it a little bit. Recently, and maybe I'll share this in an upcoming uh, video as well. So while I was uh, while I was on my trip, I started collecting and pressing flowers again, which has been really fun. And I think I might start like a little pressed flower journal, like. Um, where I'll stick the flower on one side and then maybe draw it on the other, like a line drawing kind of style. This is really nice, by the way, though I think that I prefer the lighter mixes. I wonder if that will be a pattern as we go along. Maybe I can add a little bit more of the uh, orange directly in here. I'm also um, thinking that maybe I should make a like a finalised selection of my Roman Schmoll watercolours to put in this uh, empty pencil tin that's up here. But I I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do that yet, so I'm procrastinating, I'm not going to lie. But I'm sure it will happen at some point. So I don't think I'm going to do these in rainbow order or anything. I don't think that's necessary. But I think I'm going to do next... Hmm... Maybe I will do, how about ultramarine violet? So that's this one here. I have a feeling that these are gonna mix to make a really interesting um, sort of neutral color, like a gray. It's like kind of complementary, aren't they? But um, I think it will work quite well because the ultramarine violet is also a, quite a low tinting colour, which also is like the nickel titanate yellow. So I expect that they might mix quite easily because I think that's another challenge that you face with this colour is the fact that it's uh, not got the most tinting strength. So you can struggle to get strong mixes. But we'll see, I guess. So let's start by just mixing a tiny bit. in. Okay, <laughs> that's already gone quite far, hasn't it? <laughs> Okay, I'll get some more yellow. Nobody panic. Colour mixing is, uh, it's fun. It can be challenging, can't it? This is a less appealing shade of a sort of yellowy grey. Though I did like the shade of grey that I saw before I added more yellow, so. It's almost like a, a beigey brown. Maybe like a clay kind of colour. And I'll label all these at the end, uh, by the way, around the edge and give you a close up in case you want to see uh, a little bit closer because um, ultramarine violet, it, at least, is a uh, granulating colour. So you never know, there might be some nice uh, colour separation as it dries. Okay, let's try and get that nice mid tone that we had before. 
I think I've got a bit of hay fever. You know, I never used to get hay fever until I moved to, moved country. And I, I think maybe it's just because it's like a different kind of pollen here. And then I get hay fever. See, this is a really nice soft grey. Like when you take it away from the yellow and further towards the purple, you get this really nice uh, soft grey. I can imagine using this as a neutral in like a floral painting or something. I think a uh, nickel technique yellow is actually just generally quite quite nice for floral paintings. Just get some more of this ultramarine violet. Wow. I do you like ultramarine violet too? But yeah, I've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a tickly throat as a result. I guess I'll be editing out lots of coughing. <laughs> That's okay. I've been looking forward to making this video because I really enjoy watching how colours mix on the paper and I find it quite meditative to do that especially when I can uh, just natter away at the camera at the same time you know you have to let me know how you guys have been doing recently I love it when I get when we get this interaction in the in the comments section between people talking about art supplies and uh, techniques and people's experiences it helps out me as well so much so let me know i've got some nice bleeds going on between my ultramarine violet but i think these are really lovely soft soft violets that you wouldn't necessarily expect based on this color and i can already see some granulation so what's next i'm looking at this maybe i will pick a teal how about this cobalt turquoise which is also a little bit more muted these colours, by the way, in this tray, they give me so much inspiration. Like, just looking at them makes me happy. I'm doing this on the back side of some Canson XL watercolour paper, which I use for my swatches because it's uh, affordable. Though I, it's always interesting, if you have like a particularly favourite mix, to see what it looks like on some paper with some more texture or with a higher, with, with any percentage of cotton, honestly, because I find that paint does behave differently. It's a lovely sunny day here, which is always such a relief when the sun starts shining because we get really long winters. I mean, it's the end of, almost the end of April now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's been a long one for sure. So I think it's quite telling whenever you go outside and everybody is, everybody's out in the sun like uh, lizards or something, you know, soaking up the, soaking up the rays while we've got them because I think it's due to rain again soon. We're having some really spring weather. Speaking of spring, what a lovely spring green. I'm not usually a lime green sort of person. I wasn't expecting that. That's really pretty. I'm very happy with that colour. Get some stronger colours in the next couple mixes. I also I feel like I don't use understand this cobalt turquoise enough. Maybe I'll just do a little bit of like a colour showcase sometimes, just pick a colour that I'm feeling that that week and do some mixes. Would you guys be interested in that? I know there's quite a lot of content like that on YouTube already, but personally, I don't have a problem watching all of it. So maybe you guys don't either. And you can always leave requests as well. Like if you uh, know any particularly interesting mixing colours that I don't own already, you can check out my uh, swatching and haul videos. I think that's got a pretty comprehensive catalogue of all of the colours I own at this point. I definitely want to play around a little bit more with uh, the quinacridone coral, or I think, goodness, what does Roman Schmall call it? Quinacridone cherry red which I is one of those colours which I have said before that I really don't get along with very well as an individual colour, but every time I try it in a mix, I absolutely love it. So I think it would be interesting to see where that would lead us. So this is really stunning. I love these greens. You know, looking at this uh, collection already, this is really making the case for Nickel Titanate Yellow, isn't it? 
I love watching, uh, looking back at the palette as well and seeing how all the colours have mixed. But enjoy it while it lasts because it's going to have to go. Okay, what should we do next? How about a warmer blue? We could do cobalt blue. We could do ultramarine blue or cobalt blue deep or lavender. Or let's go for phthalo blue red shade, maybe. I know it's quite a strong colour, so we might have trouble getting a balanced mix, but I like a challenge. That's uh, one characteristic of me. <laughs> Rarely say no to a challenge. But phthalo blue red shade is a, I mean, phthalo colours in general. Anyone who's ever used one will know that they have a lot of character. Very strong, very transparent. But this one is definitely, I think Schmincke's version of um, phthalo blue red shade, they call phthalo sapphire blue. And I can see it, you know, looking at this now. Really stunning. I'm interested to see what kind of greens we get compared to like the much softer, uh, cooler blue with the cobalt turquoise. Okay, let's try and get a very tiny bit of this phthalo. Oh. <laughs> okay, that, that that's okay. We'll, we'll take that. It's very interesting, going to be very interesting trying to find a midpoint. It's another very springy green, maybe a little bit more vibrant. It's also not going to be granulating. I don't think that the, I haven't noticed that the nickel titanate yellow is super granulating. It's a little bit opaque, sure, but not, um, not crazy texture, sort of more smooth and flat and opaque. I guess we'll see where this takes us. I'm really just like tapping the, the paintbrush into the blue and it's wow. Okay. I guess we'll take that as our mid mid tone. There is separating a little bit on the paper actually, interestingly. Whereas the cobalt turquoise, I don't know if you can see, it's granulating. It looks amazing. I love the texture of that granulation. I think it's really interesting to do like some botanical design or something like some leaves using that granulation to affect maybe some kind of like art nouveau style design that's been another thing i've been into recently something i associate with art, art nouveau anyway oh you can see it separating on the palette as well wow thinking of art nouveau there's always quite a lot of uh dandelion motifs i associate with art nouveau and I've been taking a lot of pictures of dandelions recently. I'm very inspired by the way that they sort of appear kind of out of nowhere at this time of year, like from the most unlikely places as well, like from the from the pavement or like from straight out of a wall or something. Quite inspiring. Should all be like dandelions, just going with the flow, growing in unexpected locations. This is a really nice teal. I haven't commented on it, but I absolutely love how this yellow is mixed with this blue. I, yeah. I prefer phthalo blue red shade to phthalo blue green shade. I know that people say that the green shade is more versatile as a mixing colour, but there's also colour preference within that, you know. I think they do. I think it's nice. I think it mixes nice greens and nice purples, which is very valuable, honestly. And these colours are quite similar, but different enough that I think that they would have different, different purposes. I'm trying to decide what my next colour will be. I always feel like I'm choosing candy from a candy box. Maybe I'll go with this lavender. I'm, hmm, or is that a little bit too similar? Maybe we'll go with the permanent alizarin crimson. Get like a nice pinky red on there every time i will do another roman schmoll uh, watercolor order by the way at some point in the next few months because i i find myself on uh <clears throat> on art store websites looking at them every now and then 
And I do have a wish list. Which <laughs> sounds vaguely like a threat. I guess it's a threat of an art haul video. But if you uh, know any of their colours, if anybody has used these and has any recommendations, then please do let me know because I would be very interested. I'm actually loving watching this blue and this yellow separate on the on the palette. So nice. Let's see. Maybe we'll just go for the stronger red colour first here. I know that's a high risk move because I only just uh, painted the other one so it'll probably bleed. But this is a rose colour. This is, I've seen roses this colour. And I love that. Wow, 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 wow. That might sound like an overreaction, but I was not expecting to love this colour as much as I do. That is amazing. This would be an amazing mix for florals. Just like a little tiny bit of the Nicolazo yellow. Nicolazo yellow. Have I said that before? I hope not. Nickel titanate yellow. In with the permanent laser and crimson. Try and find a sort of middle ground. Again, not always that easy with a low tinting colour. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe like this. But I think the texture in this is going to be interesting too. Like maybe the nickel, uh, maybe the yeah nickel titanate yellow will separate out a little bit, since the permanent laser and crimson is so like aggressively transparent. That's amazing. I I love these colors. Ah, oh. this this permanent laser and crimson is the reason I don't own a quinacridone magenta. By the way, I just find myself like loving the mixes that you get with. The permanent laser and crimson. I think it's PR 176 for the pigment nerds out there, including me, of course. I hope you guys can't hear the people coming and going in my apartment building. I live on the ground floor, so everybody has to come through the hallway right outside my door to get to their houses. This is a lot more muted. This is a really muted peach compared to the very bright one that we got with you orange i also absolutely love these blooms that we're getting in the in the outer rings absolutely stunning wow are we doing a wow counter <laughs> i hope not <laughs> okay how about we try a closer mix something more orangey how about we use this ginger red, ginger red ruby, I believe it's called. It's a new pigment, relatively new to the market. And it's quite a vibrant orange, but an, a sort of opaque, earthy orange. And I haven't experimented much with this either. Also due to its uh, opacity, which I'm trying to get over and learn how to embrace. So maybe this will provide us with some... It's almost like a perfect brick colour. This orange. But yeah, Denise, uh, Denise Soden really uh, inspired me with her video about her opaque watercolour palette. So I would be interested in potentially recreating my own sort of version um, using the colours that I already have since I've got so many and seeing what I could make with it. But I'd be interested to know um, if I'm going to try out some other colour palettes or um want to do some other color mixes like is there anything sort of that you guys would like to see me try it out using like in a that's a bad phrasing um is there like a context which would make it more interesting i guess because i think that just swatching out can be you know it could be more interesting but also i know that sometimes doing a painting or whatever people don't don't always want to watch a, a whole painting process uh, i think this is probably a a midway between these two. Nice muted skin tone, almost. This is so orange, wow. 
I should use this colour more often. I also think that because this paper is a little bit on the cheaper side, you end up with more of these sort of hard-edged blooms and stuff, which I actually quite like. Just as well, because I don't really want to use any fancy paper just for this sort of playing around and learning more about my colours. But yeah, I know, I'm never really sure whether I should try and be more inventive and you know, make a painting or a different format for my swatching or whether people just enjoy watching me swatch in a more traditional method in a wheel or in a grid or I know people always people always say you should just do what you want to do and that's wonderful advice but sometimes you don't know what you want to do <laughs> which is usually my predicament this is a lovely color too this is a yeah I don't even know how to describe this color like a yellow brick where I grew up we have these kinds of bricks made from the clay around the area, which are this sort of yellowy orange color. Did you guys know about um, brick collectors? There are people who collect bricks. There are so many different kinds. And then there are people who all meet up like a, like a car boot sale in a, in a field and exchange bricks. Like you could collect bricks for a hobby. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? I'm always I'm always amazed. At, excuse me while I grab another piece of paper towel. I'm always amazed by the hobbies that people have and these niche things that I would never have never have thought of. But someone's into it, you know. Maybe maybe one of you is a brick collector. Tell me in the comments. Maybe one day when I get really bored, I'll start collecting bricks, you know? I was on the Wikipedia page for the list of hobbies the other day. Dangerous, dangerous spot. Let me tell you. Okay, enough nattering. I think I'm gonna go for the lavender this time. This one definitely has some weird crap in it. <laughs> I tend to leave this palette open on my coffee table. So it gets like all dusty. This is a beautiful lavender. I don't know if you guys can see if it's focusing. It's so creamy, but then, and you sort of worry that it's going to be heavy and like a gouache or something. But then when you put it on the paper, it's absolutely not. It's really like a lot more transparent than you might have thought. If they sold this paint in a tube, it would have gone in my travel palette. Which I also can do a video for, by the way, because I I actually bought a new watercolour palette for my trip last weekend. Um, but it was a little bit hectic and I was very tired prior to going, so I sort of filmed a little bit of footage of filling it up and stuff. But I uh, let me know if you'd like a tour of the travel watercolour palette. I know there's a lot of those around, but it's always interesting to see which colours people choose, isn't it? Okay, let's go with this. This is sort of like almost a, a muted lime green, like a an earth green, a bit yellowy. And this might separate as well, because this colour, the lavender, is quite granulating. Let's mix in. You can see the white pooling on the top, and then when I move it, the blue seeps in. I hope it's on the screen. I think it is. Let's go for the full blue. Wow, that's lovely too. This is like a greener kind of periwinkle colour, maybe. Or like a muted sky blue, a cloud blue. Really interesting either way. Maybe like a light denim. <laughs> um, I should uh they should hire me to um, give uh, paint colours names. You know, like when you go to the hardware store or whatever, if you're painting a painting a room and you have to pick colours and some of the names that they give them. That's so crazy, especially like the, the fancy ones, like from this brand called Farrow and Ball that my parents used to buy 
paint colours from and I remember their paint colours being like dead pigeon and elephant's breath. Nice quality paint though. Just a bit pretentious on the naming, but you know. We can have a little pretentious sometimes as a treat. This is really nice. I love this mix. I was worried it was going to be too similar to the other greens, but actually it's not at all. I hope you guys don't mind my slightly deranged rambling today, by the way. I'm having a little bit of like a, it's a bit of a hectic time with my work right now. And this is so relaxing. I'm deciding, trying to decide between whether I will mix the last mix, make it between the hooker's green or the deep green gold. The deep green gold will be a, like a lower contrast mixture. Maybe I'll go with the hooker's green. I'll go with the hooker's green. I wish that I could just sit here and mix colours all day. But sadly, like most people, I have to do my dishes. You know, and like, I don't know, do my duolingo. <laughs> so that the owl doesn't come and kill me in my sleep. No, I'm just kidding. Any, uh, anybody learning a language right now? I love learning languages. Even uh, before I found out I was moving country, I was learning a different language. My boyfriend's family speaks a different language to me, which was quite good motivation. But even before that, I was also uh, just interested. I mean, the internet makes it so easy to learn languages now. By the way, this is really good uh, advertisement for artist quality paint. The amount of... I, I thought I was going to use all this uh, paint, but it's so... Much pigment, even though a low tinting colour. That's good. It can stay there. I'll use it in a painting. Wow. So this hooker's green is made up with um, PB27, which is a Prussian blue, and Nicolazo yellow, PY150. It is a very vibrant green. At some point I was doing a test, by the way, to see which of my watercolours was the most pushy. Like when you put it up against the edge of a of another colour, which one would run into the other one. And I made like a little hierarchical table. <laughs> this is how you can tell that you work as a scientist, isn't it? Has anyone else ever done that? I found that the cobalt teal at the time I have more colours now, but at the time the cobalt teal and the Aquarius yellow, which uh, I don't have the pigment number on the, off the top of my head, but I'm sure you could look it up. They were the pushiest. Can't remember who won in the showdown between them. I think this could go a little bit more yellow for them. For the in between, yeah. This is lovely. What a lovely sort of uh, muted grass green. I wonder if this will separate. Can have we seen separation in any of the others? Yes, with the permanent lizard and crimson. There is some separation. Really nice. Really nice springy greens. These two colours uh, would be in a spring palette if I was going to come up with a seasonal palette. Which I might do, by the way. I kind of already have been workshopping some ideas for a spring palette. With, uh, from my uh, Roman Schmoor watercolour collection, so that might be coming in the near future, depending on what people would like to see. I might do some polls on my community tab again. Who doesn't love, who doesn't love a poll? If somebody gives me a, a questionnaire where it's just choose one from multiple answers, I love doing that. I think that's human nature, isn't it? I love to have an opinion in an inconsequential setting. Wow, I can't believe I'm done with that already. That seemed like it went so quickly. Probably didn't for you guys. <laughs> but yeah, so here's a close up of the of the final color wheel. Let me just stand up so I can see what you're seeing. So this was the hooker's green, cobalt turquoise, ginger red ruby, 
ultramarine violet, permanent lizard and crimson, aquarius orange, uh, lavender, full focus, there we go, and phthalo blue, red shade. So I will let this dry and add some labels and then I'll bring you back for a close up and sign off. Okay, so I'm back and the paint is dry. So now we can see together all of the lovely color mixes. I am amazed. I'm so glad I chose this nickel titanate yellow for this color mixing adventure. And as you can see, this color separation with the permanent lizard and crimson is absolutely stunning. I think that would just look amazing on a flower, like a big loose rose or something, like a wild rose. But even then, like the mixes with this uh, cobalt turquoise where the granulation is coming through and also with the lavender, this range of colours is super stunning, like soft greys. You can really see the range that you can get just by mixing with this sort of lighter pastel lemon yellow. And um, I think that the contrast with one of the more sort of traditional quote unquote lemon yellows, which are usually more uh, transparent and vibrant, I think these are really, really great options. Thank you so much for coming with me on this uh, swatching and colour mixing uh, adventure. I hope to do more of these in the future because I've learned so much just from this one little project. And yeah, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and tell a friend. Tell a friend who loves colours and looking at colours and colour mixing and saying the word colour too much. <laughs> Until next time, uh, I hope you have a great day and thank you so much for watching.